Hello, I'm Scott Macheno, editor of telecoms.com, and I'm delighted to be speaking to Fergus Wills of Enea. Um, rising energy prices and net zero targets mean that operators now have energy usage and, use and sustainability at the top of their agendas. Most of the energy is consumed by the radio access network, so higher traffic volumes mean more energy consumed. And given how video traffic has been growing exponentially, operators have been looking at ways to cut their energy usage on the RAN and still deliver consistent quality of service to subscribers. Do we think this can be achieved? Well, Aenea has recently done a study on this very issue and concluded that operators could reduce energy consumption in the RAN by a remarkable 10%. To explain in more detail, I'm chatting to Fergus um, to hear more about it. So, Fergus, why don't you just start by telling us about your study? Yeah, thanks, Scott. Um, one of the big things I should just mention at the, at the top here is that Enea has been a specialist software vendor for mobile operators for a number of years now. So we specialize in analyzing um, network data traffic uh, to and from the internet, uh, looking at how that's changed over the years with the the rise of smartphones and, and the plethora of different devices involved. So Enea as an, as an organization, as a software vendor, selling to uh, uh, putting solutions into the data center of the mobile operator uh, has been at the forefront of understanding data traffic for a number of years now. And um, as you're saying, I mean, the key point here is how does this translate to, to energy, literally electricity consumption um, in the network? So we've been looking at the study has been looking at the end-to-end -end journey, literally the request that you would have from your mobile device for internet content, um, and then the return path. And what at each stage um, of that journey to and from the internet, big service providers like uh, the YouTube, Netflix, Facebook, what is the energy consumption at each stage? And what then can be done about this? Because the rising price of wholesale electricity um, has meant that this has come to the fore for operators. Um, so it is an increasing uh, cost that they have to set aside uh, money for, so it impacts the business and they can't. You know, it's not really feasible just to pass on these costs to the end users because we're all uh, facing a, literally a cost of living crisis out there. Yeah, we certainly are. Um, so could you tell me a little bit more about um, sort of NIA's approach to helping operators uh, save on yeah. their energy? Well, I would say what is unique uh, about our solution is that we actually look at the internet content itself. So uh, we spent um, uh, a long time looking at the, uh, a lot of the data flows are encrypted, so nobody's decrypting traffic here, but we look at the, the data flow to and from the internet, and we can identify the heaviest component of that, which is video. Uh, so video streaming generally, um, from our experience, consumes approximately 60 to 70 percent of everyone's mobile data profile. So um, if you can understand what's happening in respect to video and literally optimize the flow so that it suits the transmission over the radio network, then you can save bytes. If you can save bytes in the transmission, then you actually save energy in the transmission. The GSMA did a study, I think you were highlighting this at the, the, the top, but the GSMA did a study that in terms of the radio network consumption, that is about 73% of an operator's overall energy electricity spend. Now we know that electricity is sourced from different parts, so it's indicative here, but um, if we can save bytes over the air, then we can save energy over the air. And what our software does, and he uh, is in a unique position here, is it can understand the video flow and then optimize it literally the number of bytes involved to to consume the same amount of video. So I would just say that video is packaged in different ways. We would know it uh, generally uh, in terms of say high definition, maybe a high definition TV or standard definition TV. So the different resolutions mean a lot in, in video. It's packaged in different ways and delivered from the different suppliers, YouTube, Netflix, Facebook, et cetera, in these different forms. So you can actually, take a high definition video and transform it by moderating the flow into a standard definition package. On a smartphone, users can't tell the difference. So you and I as humans, we can't actually tell the difference between um, high definition and standard definition. Our studies have shown, and, and we've been a specialist in this for a number of years, that over 70% of people can't tell the difference. 
between a high definition and standard definition on a smartphone. So the simpler equation is if we can moderate the flows, turn high definition video uh, into standard definition video, but keep the same user experience, so you get to watch the same video, then we can save bytes in the transmission and we can save energy. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense because obviously smartphones have got smaller screens right. uh, with a with a smaller number of pixels that they can accommodate, even the most high-end ones. So right. that, that completely makes sense. Um, so I'm wondering if you can give, give us a sense of how what you've just described translates into, into sort of value in real terms. Yeah, that's actually um, a really good question because a lot of networks are very different in their composition and the radio access involved. Um, in their where they source their energy from, uh, for example, and in the different profiles of different users and device mix. So what we did do, if I could just uh, share with my screen here, and what we did do was put together um, a little calculator, um, which um, makes it uh, more simple to understand how you can translate this into real value. So I'll just run through a couple of the key variables and there. They're also detailed in our report, which is available at Enea.com. But you know, what size of network? Enea is sitting in the data center. So we're looking at the network effect here, not an individual. We're looking at the network effect because we're literally at the interface point between the radio uh, and the internet for our mobile operators. So we're sitting in the data center and we can see all of the traffic. Okay. So you know, simply how many subscribers do you want to serve? How, how big is the network? So this, we picked an average size of 10 million. Some are bigger, some are smaller. We have bigger customers and we have smaller customers, but indicative to make the math a little bit easier, let's use 10 million. Um, and then what is the average consumption uh, per subscriber? There's a number of different reports. The average consumption of a European subscriber could be in the 11 gigabytes range. It could be a little less, but in this case, we're picking... Um, 10 gigabytes. Again, uh, you can play with this to see if your average subscriber is using less, then you can uh, play with that number. Or uh, if they're using more, of course, then you can play with that number. But let's pick 10 gigabytes. How much of that is video? I mean, that's, I mean, essentially, we can optimize flows, we can look at flows, but we're a, a video specialist that we, we're unique because we're looking at the content here. We're not building new radio transmitters that are more efficient. We're dealing with a network that is there and looking at the content that's trying to be transmitted uh, and received by the end user. So generally that's in the 65% range as we were discussing. So, um, and then what's the, what's the energy, what's the electricity consumption of the network? Um, the GSMA reported uh, this simple number, uh, 0.24 kilowatt hours per gigabyte. So, it's an awful, it's a big calculation as to work to work out for different networks and cooling and climate um, and efficiency, et cetera. But this is an average number. Okay. So um, if you look at the energy efficiency uh, of what the radio transmission is doing compared to what I would have to do in the data center, what ANEA has to do in the data center, because we have to sit, we have to account for that. We have to spend a little bit of energy to save energy. Essentially, it's a thousand, the difference is about a thousand times. I can spend um, X amount of energy in the data center, but I can save a thousand X on the radio transmission. But let's put this in real terms because kilowatt hours translate to megawatt hours, wholesale electricity translates to cost. Okay, so the GSMA said it's about 0.24 kilowatt hours per gigabyte. And I'm saving gigabytes in my optimization as we've been talking about for video. So what then finally, what is the, how does this translate to real numbers? What's the cost of a megawatt hour? So that's been the concern uh, for the last year or so uh, because of the various uh, political tensions around the world, as well as climate change. But the real uh, variability in the megawatt hour price, we've seen enormous variability in Europe and Latin America. Actually, the uh, inter, uh, the interworking price in, in North America has also um, seen significant change. But earlier this year, it was in the 300 euro range in Europe per megawatt hour for wholesale electricity. We're not talking about household. We're talking about what uh, a big operator would have to buy from the wholesale electricity market to feed the network. 
So those are the key variables. And then you can, with our little slider calculation here, which is unique, it makes it simple to understand how this translates. You can hit the calculate button um, and you can see that in this case, um, it's significant. You're looking at uh, 9 million uh, euros per year that you could save in terms of cost. Again, the cost saving is something then that matters because it makes, uh, it gives the operator more money to invest in new radio, uh, more efficient radio techniques. It's not something they have to pass on to their end users. It makes the business more sustainable as well as uh, saving literally electricity. So when we were looking at this, um, you know, there, again, there's some variability in the cost. It could come down, say, for example, to 200 euro um, uh, because some of the tensions in the world are, are electricity has been sourced from different parts. Again, you're looking at um, 6 million euro being saved. The idea here is that the tool that we have here, which is, uh, again, unique and makes it real for the operator, gives a, um, a clear impression of what can be saved and how that translates then into real monetary value um, and cost savings uh, for the operator and cost savings then, again, that don't have to be passed on to the end user or they can use uh, uh, to develop um, and, you know, different forms of radio transmission. Yep, great. Well, I mean, those those money savings speak for themselves. Um, and, and I'm sure as someone who writes about the operator quarterlies, on a regular basis, I, I know they'd be, they should be grateful for it. I mean, do you think we've got a sense, you might've covered this already and tell me mm -hmm. if you have, but do you think we've got a sense of how much um, an operator could save on average? Um, it's a complex, um, so that's what we put together in our report. It's a complex um, uh, scenario in which each operator's blend in their network slightly different, their energy efficiency slightly different. So we, we can, produce indicative values and we invite then the conversation um, about what this actually translates to for an operator. But um, in our case, we were uh, in our reports, we were looking at say an average operator size of 10 million. You can save um, at least 10% on the data, at least 10% on the overall data path. You're saving maybe 20% on the amount of video being consumed. So you're saving 20% in the bytes but watching the same videos, keeping that user experience the same, they get to consume the video on the smartphone. So you can see if 20% of the video bytes translates to about 10, 11% on the data savings, which translates to the electricity cost, average size of network 10 million, uh, 10 million users, you actually save uh, 10 million euro. Wow. A little bit dependent on the wholesale electricity price of where they source. Again, yeah. these are complex situations, which were totally. simple. Yeah. No, understood. Uh, you kind of you kind of preempted um, my final question um, in, in talking about inviting a conversation. Um, but you know, if you could elaborate, what should operators do if uh, having watched this video, they want to know more? Well, um, I would say that um, to uh, check us out on www.ania.com, um, we have uh, an executive level report and a more detailed report that actually substantiates these figures. But check out that calculator and slider and begin to think about their own numbers, their own size of network, um, their own uh, cost of uh, wholesale cost of electricity um, and how much they're paying for uh, paying for that. Um, and then consider that um, uh, attacking this, not just from a radio network perspective and getting more efficient radio transmission involved, but using less bytes to give the same user experience is a key additional value that they can add in, in their search, not just for cost savings, but in their target to get to net zero uh, and to reduce their carbon emissions. It's another uh, tool in the arsenal that, that they could uh, use. And Ania has been in this game for, or in this specialist area for a number of years now. Yeah, I think there's no doubt. I mean, obviously, um, companies everywhere were already sort of working hard to reduce their energy and, and their carbon footprint and that sort of thing. And, and the current spike in energy prices, I'm sure, has totally accelerated that process. So it seems like what you're offering is quite timely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that was that was very interesting. Thank you very much for your time, Fergus. Um, and, and we'll leave it there. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks, Scott.